How to Travel Through Time in Dungeons & Dragons. Today I'm going to talk about an interesting uh, supplement, Chronomancer. Now this is a supplement that I've had for a long time, Chronomancer, and it's a very interesting um, uh, tool, uh, book, about time wizards. Um, it came out in the mid-90s somewhere. I'm not going to look up the thing, but it's a new wizard class. Um, and it uh, gives you access to the uh, temporal prime dimension, or the dimension of time. And um, it's, 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 in, in the book itself, it's got a note about the demiplane of time. A few previously published AD&D game materials have dealt with the issue of time travel to any extent. Those that have done so refer to a place called the Demiplane of Time. While it is understandable that an outsider might conceive of the dimension of the temporal plane as some kind of demiplane, it is in fact nothing of the sort. The phrase Demiplane of Time is simply a misnomer for something that is difficult for any but a chronomancer to fully comprehend. It's understandable that outsiders try to fit temporal prime into their own necessarily limited theories of how the universe is constructed would make this mistake. Here, however, it is corrected. For this reason, creatures like the time demi-elemental have been given more appropriate names, as has the dimension that spawned them. All of this becomes clear with further study of chronomancery. Okay, and chronomancers are like these super elite wizards. Um, to be a chronomancer, you have to have really high stats. You have to, and they're very rare that you'd even have a, a chronomancer. They're elite, they're rare, they're secretive. Um, but they've learned how to time travel. Um, and then they get all their magical effects and they get new magic spells. And of course, there's magical time monsters. Um, and. Uh, um, they get some special benefits. Uh, for example, if they're a guide, a historian, a seer, or a traveler, they all get these extra special benefits as far as um, what they're going to do or what they're going to get. Like a guide. Guides are similar to travelers. It's interesting it says that, but it doesn't um, introduce traveler until um, later. Like, Guides are discussed on page 8, travelers on page 12. But right away it says guides are similar to travelers, so you could say there was some editing issues with this book. Um, but guides are meddlesome. Uh, they use their powers to seek out weak points in the natural order of events and change them as they see fit. They have a righteous belief in a certain plan of the world, and when they act, they believe they are bettering reality. They're fixing reality. Most guides are benevolent, fight against evil, but some are destructive, since their plans may run against the welfare of most beings. Um, if you were to think about uh, the old Quantum Leap TV show, I think uh, Sam Beckett might be a guide, whereas the evil leaper would be the, uh, the evil version of that guide. There's the historian. Okay, the, the, the historian chronomancer is a scholar deeply infatuated with the past. They learn and accurately record historical events, uh, driving the wizard to study and develop skills that allow them to become a recorder of history. Uh, they don't let on that they're wizards, and uh, they would call themselves diviners of past events. Uh, they don't want to change the past. They just want to study the past. Um, and of course, all of these Haggit guys have requirements. The historian has to have a, has to have a wisdom of 17, as does the guide. The uh, seer has to have a charisma of 14 to become a seer, which is kind of an interesting uh, diversion of that. And the seer, of course, is what's mentioned next, is they're the most interested in future events, uh, prediction, prophecies, and shaping. Uh, they're extremely public, unlike the historian which tried to blend in. The seer kind of tr tries to stand out. But they hide their true nature by posing as normal wizards. 
If their ability to meddle with time were discovered, their prophecies would appear to be promises instead, and this could affect the outcome of their predictions. Uh, of course, if they're like all of these time wizards, they're secretive, and they're but their in knowledge is based upon actual experience, not uh, they're they're not really predicting because they know what's going to happen or because they've probably been there. Uh, seers prefer an obscure background, and most cannot be traced further back than their first public predictions. Urban areas are popular, uh, especially if there's war, succession, or any major problems. And finally, there's that traveler that we were, you know, told to, that the guide was similar to. Travelers are most akin to the standard adventuring wizard in that they have no set goal but to learn and advance in their chosen profession. All aspects of chronomancy and temporal time, or temporal prime, fascinate the character type. Most known chronomancers are travelers, as they make no pains to hide their status as a wizard, and sometimes grow to great lengths, even flaunting their abilities to manipulate time, to be sure people remember them. Even so, they guard the mechanics of their magic, as well as any other chronomancer, ensuring that they remain unique among wizards. Uh, they may travel other times, like most adventurers visit the local ruins. They look out for themselves, being very self-important, and always watching the scene unfolding around them. Uh, travelers tend to head for the action, and this character can be found near important events or people, rarely in hiding. Kind of reminds me of Doctor Who a little bit for time travel, not exactly. Um, this is the Doctor Who do doesn't exactly fit this, but he probably fits this one closest to the uh to what's here obviously he's not just standing there trying to predict he's not just casually watching history unfold as he does actually interact so that's probably closest to what the uh doctor who is um of course there's some chronomancer subclasses there's the temporal champion um elves half elves and humans uh can can uh, be that. Uh, there's various stats for that temporal champion, but the, what the thing uh, that the uh, that they really have is they have access to the power of time. They have spells and magic items, um, as you would expect from any you know wizard would be able to cast spells and have magic items and stuff. Um, they can uh, do interesting things like uh, de evolve. Um, uh, uh, warriors. They can. So it's not just all about time travel. They can slow metabolism. Uh, slow metabolism uh, increases the length of time required between meals. Uh, they can cast delay image, uh, whereas the recipient is surrounded by a thin magical aura that blends time slightly, causing them to appear about a second behind, and that gives them a benefit to their armor class. Um, I can do things like accelerate plant growth, uh, time slip. By the means of time slip, the barrier between the reality and temporal plane is thinned, and the chronomaster instantly slips between the two. Any creatures intending to attack, someone who manages to time slip away, first lose their attacks for that round. Um, so that gives them uh, the ability to kind of escape. They have a uh, life tether. Um, it uh, creates a magical tether to the creature's lifeline, and the creature must be close enough for the chronomancer to recognize it by sight. And uh, yeah, they can ways to extend that with the eyes of the eagle. But if the chronomancer slips to temporal prime, he appears next to the creature's lifeline, and then they can see basically see each other. There's paradoxes. There's prophecies. There's healing through time. Uh, Wesley's temporal disjunction. Now the effect creature loses sense of time. So there are some creatures, of course, various creatures. The kind of the neat thing about the uh, the uh, time is the protectors of the realm. Uh, all chronomancers have heard rumors of the guardians, uh, though few know who they actually are. 
Uh, they could be tech wizards from the future. They could be an enlightened organization that fights evil throughout history, which is how I played it in my campaign. Yes, I played these guys in in campaigns. Um, and actually how I did it is I had, like, the, the PCs were low level. They knew nothing, of course, about the uh, time wizards. Uh, the time wizards were actually, they're, they're kind of their they're quest givers. And as time, as as, as as it went on, they actually encountered this dragon, uh, who was a baby dragon at the time. But how the kind of the overarching story that I had had created and it actually worked out for once, because <laughs> um, lots of times when you create these big overarching stories, they don't work out because something changes and then the whole thing changes. But then in this case, they ended up encountering that same dragon as a wormling, as an adult, and as an ancient dragon. And they actually ended up uh, fighting the same dragon in all three of its forms at the same time. Uh, the thing was that the uh, the evil time wizard that had uh, unleashed this dragon uh, he had made it so that all three forms had to be killed simultaneously. Otherwise, if you killed one of the ages uh, after a couple of uh, rounds of combat, it would start to stand back up. So they all had to be killed at the same time, and they were all in three different locations, uh, not only physically, but in time. So actually, this party had to split. They had to be in, in a flooded um, uh, pyramid. They had to be in a uh, forest uh, setting, and then they had to be kind of in a futuristic type setting, too. So that was kind of a fun little experience for for that kind of that conclusion to that particular particular campaign where I actually use the chronomancers. Um, would I have a PC play as a chronomancer? Uh, maybe low level, give them access to a couple of low level uh, spells. That would definitely be a curated thing. I wouldn't let them pick or we wouldn't be rolling for it. It would definitely be uh, you've talked to the, you know, your mentor, you're giving you access to this particular spell, uh, but it would definitely be a curated thing as a Unless you really would just want a time travel type of a campaign, which is cool too, but um, um, definitely you want it to be very careful about that because obviously they can jump around and do stuff. Of course, there is some stuff built in like the uh, Guardians, which if your PCs were to start doing a lot of time changing, the Guardians could step in and then you could have some things there, which could be fun. But um, yeah, that could be definitely be an, an interesting thing. Um, the Guardians monitor the time streams carefully and try to fix severe damage if they can. Um, they detect turbulence patterns and intercept major upheavals in the natural order of events. Failing that, they plan complex infiltrations into reality to thwart the Chronomancer's plans. Kind of like those uh, temporal time police in uh, the later Star Trek stuff. I forget what they're called off the top of my head, but if you watch Star Trek, I'm sure you know what they are. Put them in. Put, a, put, put their name in the comments below if, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, occasionally, a guardian might rescue a chronomancer from destruction, but this is a special case-by-case -case determination made by the guardians. Of course, there's some limitations, uh, some various history on chronomancery, um, some more about the spells. So, like I said, this is kind of kind of a little bit all over the place. But um, there are some priest spells, and there are some wizard spells of uh, various levels that, uh, um, that can be impacted by the time traveler. And it, uh, it's quite in-depth to, to get into here. But then it actually has a thing in here on Chapter 7 about uh, fantasy adventures and actually building a future, uh, foundations of the world shaking those foundations, uh, the magic of the future, incorporating some technology. They have things like even booster packs, capacitors, cosmetic surgery, firearms, medicine, lightning generators. So, I mean, if you really wanted to play with some time stuff, that's why I say in that third, that ancient, when the dragon was ancient and it was actually in the future, you know, where some of this stuff was actually going on there that the, the uh, PCs were actually encountering was these rejuvenation centers. I mean, it was, I mean... I don't remember having telepads, but or at least we don't think we, we ended up using them. But I mean, it was all definitely things that could have been uh, 
And of course, talking about evolution, how to how to evolve various things into the future, or you know, de-evolve them with the uh, so yeah. And then the various um official AD and D worlds, how they all fit right into the your birthright campaign, or how they'll fit into your Dragonlands campaign. Um, magic works a little bit differently in Corin, for example. So it actually discusses how this uh, falls into that Forgotten Realms. Greyhawk, and actually it's interesting, with the Greyhawk campaign, it says evidence suggests that a group of guardians like chronomancers exist on Orith, but little is known of them. The Codex of Infinite Planes has a cryptic reference to the monitors of infinity drawn from all places in time, but this is the sum of the evidence. Chronomancers risk pursuit by the monitors or by an avatar of a time-related deity, if a major disruption of history occurs. And of course, there are some time gods that are mentioned um, back in, I think it is uh, Dragonlance um, has a time god, for example. Uh, so you can incorporate a bunch of that stuff. Planescape, Ravenloft, uh, Mistara, Spelljammer. It says uh, not, not a whole lot to talk about with Spelljammer, but you could definitely incorporate this into a Spelljammer campaign. And, of course, we get into our creatures. There's the Chronovoid, Temporal Dog, uh, Tether Beast, the Time Dimensional, and the Vortex Spider. So, overall, yeah, I've used it. I've used it in campaign. I've used it with players. It is fun. It is definitely something that if you're going to allow PCs access to the spells, you want to, like I said, curate which, which, which ones they have access to. Don't let them have access to all the spells because um, they would definitely overbalance the campaign. But even if the wizard has, you know, has a chronomancer as a mentor, that chronomancer isn't going to just give him access to the whole spell book. He's going to dole out the ones that he thinks that the that his uh, trainee needs, and only as the they need them. Like they, when in my campaign, the PCs didn't actually gain the ability to actually travel themselves through time. They traveled through time, but it was always the uh, mentor, you know, doing it. They didn't gain the access, the ability to do it themselves until like the last, basically as part of the last uh, push to destroy that ancient dragon. Um, and they had, you know, had to be in all those places at once. And uh, the the mentor was actually killed, and as his last act, he gave the ability to travel through time to the uh, to the um, player. So then the player was all of a sudden a, a, um, in charge of actually getting the, the troops dispersed where they needed to be and to go after that uh, those three iterations of the dragon and to coordinate the killing of that creature once they figured out that that's what they had to do, um, which took some trial and error. So that once they figured that out, then they were able to coordinate killing the, the, uh, the uh, dragon through all three times and then all of the time... Um, that uh, the uh, evil uh, chronomancer had corrupted was actually kind of a little bit reset, not exactly reset, because I don't like that if it's a total reset. But since we were ending in the campaign anyway, we ended up it. You know, obviously we ended up in the uh, PCs uh, um, stories. We ended up where they were the heroes, and uh, the, the uh, important things were reset and. Uh, and I usually at the end of a campaign like that will ask the PCs, you know, what happened, what happened to your character, what happened, you know, and now I'll kind of like fill in the uh, missing pieces there. So, but yeah, it's a great, uh, it's a great uh, little adventure. I know there's probably some hate out there on it because it's not your standard go into the dungeon, slay the, this, this, the skeleton, collect the, uh, Whatever it is that the that the goblin skeleton dragon was 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 hoarding, uh, and then go back out and uh, go to the tavern and wait for your next quest. Uh, but as a as something to plan out, it's really fun, and it kind of lets you kind of explore the history of your little world. You know, if this is your a uh, a uh, homebrew campaign, it really let it would let let your players jump into things that you've created that are interesting in your world. And uh, it also just lets you kind of explore the history of a campaign world if that's what you're uh, playing in. 
And of course, you can even give them the ability to plane walk. Obviously, you could uh, they could go between between worlds. Uh, maybe they uh, end up in Ravenloft and they jump back into time in Ravenloft. And maybe they have the opportunity to impact something with Ravenloft. Um, obviously, I don't think we would allow them to stop Strahd from being created. And I think the uh, the uh, Guardians would step in at, at that point, but maybe there's some uh, little or smaller thing that uh, could be helped. Maybe there's like a person in Barovia who is, has some tie to to an ancestor of one of the PCs. You know, there's all kinds of different things that could be uh, explored and played with, and especially if you have the ability to move through through time to do it. So it's a great book. Um, Highly recommended if you're interested in playing around with uh, time in the D&D uh, um, &D campaign. Uh, hey, you might have to tweak some things, fix some things, obviously, because like everything, it's uh, it's going to have to be customized to your specific campaign and situation. So hope you liked it. Um, yeah, let's do ahead and do the YouTube thing. Like, bell icon, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Thanks. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.